Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Here we're in Blender 2.93 beta. And today's topic is talking about how to use attributes within EV render engine. So firstly, I would like to say, I would like to warn you that there are many features which is not available in 2.92. So I won't really talk about that. Actually you can, but I don't recommend you. And another thing is there are functional limitations in EV. So if you're trying out a feature, especially for this attribute node, you should always start in cycle. Because even if you do everything correctly uh, in EV or whatever other things, because of function li node limitation within EV itself, you just won't get any correct result. And uh, in cycle, it's kind of very easy. You basically just have this, you create an attribute, you have this node, and you plug it into whatever place, emission or directly into surface, you should immediately get a kind of result. You don't even need a tutorial for that. And this is the, this is the whole point. So today I'm making a tutorial for EV instead of cycle. Um, is because that many people also get a, notion or impression that EV just won't work because of this functional, functional limitation. However, there is a very important workaround, or actually probably the only one workaround I know that will actually solve this problem. And this is the point today. So this method is actually pretty, pretty easy. Uh, you just go to the mesh, this green mesh tab and you enable a vertex color layer. Actually, this is all about it. You just have a vertex color layer, it solves all the problems. So let's just use this attribute sample texture. So if you are trying to use a kind of procedural texture that is generated from this texture tab, you always use this attribute sample texture. But obviously you can also use the attribute randomize. I just don't see a point on that. Uh, attribute randomize. Yeah, you can also you can also use attribute randomize or attribute a few other things. As long as it's attribute, it doesn't really matter. But uh, use attribute sample texture just to give you a kind of meaningful result at least. And in terms of mapping, there's many different ways. You can use the UV map, you can also use the position. They are basically the same. Actually, there is very minimal difference between these two. So let's just use UV map and you will see how it looks. So if I goes to the material preview tab, you don't see anything at this moment because I'm not connecting anything. Instead of using attribute and the principal BSDF, actually you can use your whatever. I'm just going to use the vertex color. You can plug this vertex color to whatever you want, um, either plug into color or emission, but uh, in this case, just for convenience, I'm directly plug this vertex color into surface. So it's equivalent to making a making a kind of emission shader in between. So it's equivalent. Okay. So not everything is so white. There's nothing, no texture being actually mapped. So we just the right, uh, we can actually overwrite this color by typing this color. And we do not see anything, it's just a grayish. And the problem is I don't have enough subdivision surfaces, but if you try to manipulate this size, you, can, you do see kind of um, color changes. And because I only have four vertices, it's really poor that it does not show the things correctly. But if you increase the subdivision surfaces, you can increase the resolution. And it obviously does not really make a difference whether you're actually using this UV or position. Actually, if you're using position, it's probably more detailed in this case, but essentially both methods are depending on the subdivision surfaces that you have. Okay, uh, there's a little bit of coordinate difference between position and UV, but essentially it's almost the same. So this is one part. Another part I want to remind you, however, is you can change the grayscale to colors. So you can also have the colors. This is also one thing. But uh, here's one thing I want to remind you uh, is that besides changing the size within this texture, Obviously, you can use a vector mass attributes vector mass to manipulate the positions within the. So let's take a position, and we can use the vector, 
and then we can overwrite the position. Actually, in this case, why not just point transit? Actually, you can actually. <laughs> Uh, in this case, you just uh, use a P to substitute the position so that you do not really change the position of all these vertices, but change the vertex. So this is one way. And if you change the multiplier, you are changing the scale. Actually, let's just uh, use the scale. If you're using the scale, then you're changing all these kind of sides without the change manipulating all the sides here. It's just the w one kind of trick when you're talking about the actually with the sample texture. One thing I want to add here uh, is that if I would like to make this entire color, so now it's very colorful, but what if I would like to make the color more reddish, then we need to manipulate all these kind of things. So let's firstly know that this color is actually RGBA. So Alpha is very important, but uh, RGB is red, green, blue. Uh, there are many different ways you can potentially use attributes vector mass, but a better method uh, is to use attribute mix. So let's just take the color and let's just use the code that we have and override the code. So immediately it becomes grayish. But if it just goes to the ads, or you can use other mixed values, it's basically work the same way as the shaders. Let's so let's just take the reddish and increase 100% and it becomes completely red. So you can manipulate all these kind of things. However, one thing I really would like to remind you is if you manipulate whatever data, so let's for example just the mapping the P into another P. So there is no data being written on the vertex color and you want this value, these p values, let's go through spreadsheet. So we are having a p value which is called RGBA. P value goes into the vertex color. Uh, assume there is a case that you are trying to attribute vector math. That it goes to geometry, vector mass, take a vectors, and we let's get a p, and finally get a call. So you increase whatever value, and you realize the code does not work. In this case, the reason is because uh, we are write, we are writing a ver vector in the vertex domain, but the color should be in the face corner domain. So, and it will return everything into the X, Y, Z because we're adding a vector. So the vector does not contain the fourth channel, which is alpha. So it basically converts the colors into a vector. It does not really work at all. In this case, what you need to do is to use the attribute converter. So you need to make sure that it's everything goes to face corner, but it says automatic because if it recognizes we are overriding code, then it should override the code. And we're writing colors. So just take a code. It actually won't really work, but it changed everything into RGBA, but it still does not really work. I don't really know actually the reason, but in this case, you really just, uh, not use the call, but use P, whatever other attributes instead. I probably will discuss attributes in other times, but there is also tutorial talking about that. So I don't want to redo something that uh, other people has done. Yeah, but basically this is. So there are different circumstances you're creating attributes or making attributes. But in this case, you just uh, use different ways to finally gets everything back to the truck. There is one thing I have to remind you, however, is this entire method does not work on instances. It does not work for instances. And this is the things that I would like to discuss in cycle, that's how attributes will work in instances, what are things that we can do, and what are the things that we cannot do at this moment or in the future, whatever.
So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.